Hey, good morning, my dear friends. It is really early. In fact, it's before sunrise there in Surfside, California. A breezy morning. We've got a lot to talk about. We're going to go out to Tanner Bank. We're going to talk long range. We're going to see some white sea bass in the Channel Islands. Talk San Francisco. I'll be in Florida. Two live shows later today. So much going on. Friedman Adventures setting up for the MB coming at you next. <laughs> Stay tuned, you're watching Freedmate Adventures. Mwah. Hey, good morning, my dear friends, and welcome to beautiful Surfside, California, before daybreak. I know, I'm crazy. I'm down here on the beach yelling and screaming. The lights are coming on. The residents are wondering, what is going on? Is it a tsunami warning, or is it just time for the morning briefing? Hey. We've got a lot to cover with you, and I've got a really busy day. i got an early appointment this morning. We've got two live shows to bring you. Don't forget October, Florida content coming your way. I'll be in Florida, and we'll be trying to cover the mullet run and so much more. But here we are, SoCal and Baja, and we've got a lot to talk about. In fact, it is really breezy for 5 o'clock in the morning. It's normally not breezy at all here, and that also... Well, that's going on offshore. We'll talk about that in a moment because the uh, breeze is up, more than a breeze, on Tanner and Cortez where we find those bluefin to about 100 miles offshore. We'll go south of the border, check out Ensenada. I want to talk to you about the long-range situation. We've got some white sea bass in the Channel Islands, San Francisco, Lincoln, Halibut, and there's still albacore offshore up there in that neck of the woods, and so much more. You know what time it is. It's time for the morning briefing. Good early morning, my friends. Ah, delicious. So great to be with you. Please hit that like button. We deeply appreciate it when you do that. If you could share these videos with a friend, that would be great. Don't forget to subscribe to the Freedman Adventures YouTube channel. Tick that little bell. You'll be notified when there is new content. And also, you can follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, Apple Podcast, and Spotify. Appreciate the millions of views you give us every single month. It is so deeply appreciated. Well, we have got a lot to cover. Let me put my coffee cup down and uh, grab my flashlight because I can't see a thing on my notes here. It's that early in the morning. It is beautiful, but it's a little bit windy. I will tell you that right now. All right, let's go south of the border. We'll start you out 70 miles below the border in the beautiful town of Ensenada, Baja, California, where it's mostly a rockfish kind of bite right now, but the rock fishing's prolific and excellent. There's lynx, there's bokashi, there's reds, and all kinds of other bottom critters biting down there in Ensenada. Guys are still looking offshore. But we've got a little breezy conditions down there today also, so we'll just have to see how that all plays off. It's been very, very hit and miss on the bluefin tuna. And while there's been an occasional yellowfin tuna caught offshore, overall the offshore scene has been slow. Down around Santo Tomas, which is about an hour drive for most of the pongas, maybe a little better than that when you head out of Ensenada. You can find some barracuda flurries down that way once in a while, but mostly rockfish toward Ensenada. Now along the beaches, there's still some sand and calico bass. Not much, but a little bit in there and some shallow water rockfish around Todos Santos Island. Those breezes of yellowtail do get up and put on a show once in a while. You get over there fast enough with a surface iron, you can still catch some yellowtail inside the bay. The weekends are really tough because of the boat pressure, but maybe here during the week we'll get back on it. We'll watch that for you very, very closely. Entrapped with some awesome long-range fishing yesterday. Fishing the rocks has been absolutely fantastic on the Wahoo. The long-range summertime bite has been spectacular this year. For months it's been so steady and so great on Wahoo. And then you add in the great yellowfin tuna fishing we've seen down in that neck of the woods. It has been spectacular, and the grade of yellowfin tuna has been awesome as the breeze is really starting to pick up here. 
I'm a little bit worried about this, but I think we got this under control here. I don't want my tripod to go blowing over in the breeze. So once again, nice yellowfin tuna, 40, 60, 80 pounds, sometimes up over 100 pounds. And then you can throw in some outstanding yellowtail action for the long rangers also. Sometimes that yellowtail action manifests itself in the early morning hours, dropper loop fishing, but most of the time it's been a fly line bait or a surface iron or a yo-yo iron. It's been spectacular. Then on the way home, guys will go in on the beach and they'll catch any numbers of different species. Sometimes a white sea bass flurry, more yellowtail, big calico bass, and lots of rockfish. It has been spectacular. I'm telling you, it has been a long range season to remember. Patrick Harnjack just got in on board the Vagabond here recently and they had tremendous fishing. He said it was an epic trip, one that he is never ever going to forget. And as you remember, Patrick kind of took us along on that trip. That was so much fun. Patrick, you're a great Friedman Adventures family member. We appreciate all you do for all of us and I'm so thrilled that you had such a great trip. So good stuff indeed. Back taxes, unfiled taxes. You need some help with your taxes. Tim Marquez is your man. And for your heating and or air conditioning needs, John Lopez at Efficient Heating and Air Conditioning. Time to go offshore. Now for Southern California landings, it's about 90 to 100 miles to get out to Tanner and Cortez Bank. That's where the epicenter for our bluefin tuna bite has been for months now. It's been very steady out there. Very, very good. It's become more hit and miss here recently. And I got to tell you, the wind and the weather's already up out there. We've been forecasting this for you for a few days now, several days, telling you that Monday it did not look great at all. And it's already breezy out there. It's a little bit fishable right now, but it may not be in a couple more hours. It is really starting to get nasty out there and it looks like it's going to stay that way through Tuesday and then Wednesday it becomes fishable yet still breezy sloppy and man we're starting to get to the end of summertime here and normally we get into the fall that's when we see our best weather months so hopefully that fall pattern is going to kick into gear but here this morning and later today it's going to get breezy and it's already breezy as I mentioned here on the beach. It's really kind of nasty. So we'll keep our eyes on that. There's been some really great scores here recently out on Tanner and Cortez Bay, and there's been some not so great scores. A little bit scratch here, here recently. The legend on a three-day trip, 121 bluefin tuna. What is wrong with that? Up to 180 pounds. The Islander on a two and a half day trip, 21 guys had 49 bluefin tuna. The Fortune on a two-day trip, 18 bluefin tuna to 100 pounds. Our dear friends from Black Tail Hooks, Izzy Sky, and a whole bunch of other great people. We're out with some people. We love the Amigo out of 22nd Street Landing. And it looks like they were having their usual fun time out there. They are a lot of fun to fish with. And the Amigo is such a great boat. We'll be on board there October 6th through the 8th. Really looking forward to that one. That is looking fantastic. Cassie Alexander is a new lady angler, new to the sport, and she just recently completed a trip. She didn't say what boat, unfortunately, because we want to give the crew some kudos, Cassie. You were talking about how great the crew was, but anyway, she gives uh, so much credit to the people around her, like Jolene Thompson and so many others. She caught three bluefin tuna. Now, she was very humble and said she didn't do it alone. It was the crew that really helped her accomplish this great feat, catching three bluefin tuna. Next year, her goal is to catch bluefin by herself. And with that attitude, I have no doubt that she'll be able to pull that off. So we'll watch that closely and see how it comes together for her. Thunderbird, Davies Locker, Newport Beach, 67 bluefin, and a yellowtail on a two-day trip. Not bad at all. It's still really good fishing. You know, the bar is set so high now. And partially, I feel like that's my fault. I'm also becoming accustomed to these big scores of beautiful bluefin tuna on a regular basis. And man, I tell you, we just have to feel so blessed that we're able to catch these fish. Now, as I said, I think the next 48 hours are going to be very, very difficult. But we can just talk to you 
briefly about what's been very effective, and that has been smaller hooks, like number four hooks, circle hooks, and 25 pound fluorocarbon. Now, once again, if you can fish heavier and even a bigger hook, go for it. You need your observational skills to be keen, looking at everybody around you and seeing what's working for them. And if you do that, you're gonna be able to catch more fish. But if you have to drop down and fish lighter gear, then you're gonna to have to do it. And also choose a good hot bait and then watch what's working. Changing the bait regularly or long soak. One of those two methods will work well. There's been some fish at night, some of that big fish, but it has been not wide open out there toward Osborne Bank, toward that little island we call Santa Barbara Island out there. And there's been some other areas that have been okay on that big time, uh, on that big fish at night, but that has backed off also. Definitely still good fishing, but scratchier. Some guys struggling out there trying to make that happen. So we'll keep our eyes on it. If you want to go to Catalina Island, why not do it on the El Patron out of Long Beach Ford Fishing? Speedy boat, very comfortable, great crew. Long Beach Ford Fishing. You can book on the El Patron, and it's a much less expensive price Monday through Thursday. You can go to Catalina for 100 bucks for God's sakes, and spend a great day at that beautiful island. www.longbeachsportfishing.org. And if you're headed out of Ventura Sport Fishing, Man, I'll tell you, the island spirit and Captain Daniel Hottaway, they will treat you the way you want to be treated. Great customer service and lots of rockfish right now. You can give them a call at 805-676-3474. And or you can visit them at www.VenturaSwordFishing.com. And also, don't forget, I'll be in Florida around the middle of October for a couple of weeks. If you happen to find yourself in Florida and you're anywhere around Winter Springs, send me a text if you have some ideas for some content. My son Patrick and I really want to take advantage of the mullet run while we are there. And anything else, if there's a tackle store somewhere nearby, we could do a special edition of Tackle Shop Confessions, which airs tonight at 6 p.m. here in Carson, California at Island Fishing Tackle. Don't miss us for that one. All right, so Tanner Cortez. A little bit more hit and miss, and the weather now is up. We'll watch it closely. Let's go down to the islands. Coronado Island's much slower, much more difficult right now. There's a really good sign of yellowtail at the Coronado Islands. There's also a really good sign of sea lions there. They've been a royal pain in the you-know-what here recently. They're making things difficult. It seems like that bike could come back together again, but it's been difficult. So guys are wandering around offshore trying to make it happen. Very scratchy yellowtail fishing, like scores in the 1 to 12 range on the yellowtail for most of the sport boats that were there. There's a little bit of barracuda and bass and some rockfish there also, but most people who go to the Coronado Islands are focused on the game fish, so we'll see if that's going to come together. The offshore full day scene has also been very, very slow. A few bluefin, occasionally some yellowfin tuna, that warm water stuff trying to push in here. We had a hit of 10 yellowfin tuna on the yacht wild and sack with Captain Sean Morgan off Dana Point in Southern California, but still no big numbers of YFT or bluefin tuna offshore for those local boats. We'll keep watching that for you very, very closely. At San Clemente Island, we continue to see some pretty darn good fishing going on there, but it is quite windy. And when I say good fishing, I mean a few yellowtail, occasional white sea bass, Good calico bass fishing, Bonita, and lots of rockfish there. So, again, we'll watch it very closely for you and see if that doesn't want to get going. Windy there today. Graham from United Composites was on a recent El Dorado trip. And, man, I got to tell you, he said it was all so much fun because 10-year-old Bobby McDonough, Bobby McDonough caught a 25-pound yellowtail. Bobby, that is such a spectacular catch. Man, I take my hat off to you this early morning, this beautiful morning, and I tell you, that is a spectacular catch. He also won a UC rod in the raffle before they even left. So some truly great stuff for that young man on board the Eldorado. Nice, big, beautiful yellow tail. So that is happening there. At Catalina Island, we continue to see kind of scratchy fishing. A few bass, a few whitefish, a few sheephead. Uh, pretty good bonito fishing going on there. 
But in terms of a real consistent great bite, it's just not happening. Mostly bonita, seeing the yellowtail around there, and you get an occasional shot of that. Every once in a while, you get a little bit better pop on those fish. So, hey, man, look, I can almost see her around here. I almost don't need my flashlight anymore. But once again, kind of slow there. Up in the Channel Islands, we continue to see uh, occasional white sea bass. Island Tack had a dozen white sea bass yesterday. The gray light had a white sea bass. A little bit of calico bass, some barracuda, but predominantly rockfish. Yesterday was Kids Fish Free Day on board the Island Spirit. And they had a spectacular day with lots of great eating bottom fish and kids smiling all day long with Captain Daniel Hottaway on board the Island Spirit. That is great stuff. No question about it. Really wonderful to see that happening. So uh, islands, as you can hear, there's some opportunities, but it has slowed down at a lot of the islands in terms of our surface action. Half and three quarter day boat fishing. We'll take you down to San Diego where the bite remains excellent. There's sand bass, there's calico bass, there's bonito biting really well, there's rockfish, there's an occasional yellowtail and white sea bass. How about it? It's been such a great local year in San Diego and that kind of bite is continuing for most of the boats there. Some guys will focus on the sand bass. The premiers had limits of sand bass. On a regular basis, uh, you look over on the dolphin, lots of bonita and some good calico bass fishing, the daily double, um, you know, the new Seaforth, they've all been doing really good. Moving you up to Coast Oceanside and Dana, a lot of short calico bass, but some keepers also, pretty good bonito fishing at times. Western Pride out of Davies Lockers had some good local fishing on calico bass here in the Long Beach and San Pedro area. Still looking for that surface bite, sculpin, rockfish, whitefish, Santa Monica Bay. Some decent twilight fishing up there out of Marina del Rey. And a little sign on the Redondo Special on some calico bass and bonito. Overall, though, rockfish in that area also. So that's where we have been finding ourselves. All right, let's talk the Southern California surf. And, you know, we're going to talk some of the Inner Harbor stuff also. Matt Mance fishing inside Huntington Harbor. Nice spotted bay bass and yellowfin croaker. Nice going, my friend Matt. I'll what mentioned to you that we're brought to you by Big Fish Bait and Tackle on the corner of Seal Beach Boulevard. You see them right there. I'll let that play while we talk a little bit more. And our dear friend Fatima Herrera fishing a kayak last night, picking at the bass and other species. Nice going, Fatima. Good to see you. Michael Limon. He was here yesterday on the beach with his grandpa and Mitchell Harrogat and his friend was here yesterday and we didn't catch anything. Man, it was really tough fishing here. Too much kelp. So they wandered off and man, did they find some good fishing. They had a bat ray and some sargo and some other species. I'll tell you, Michael Limon having so much fun and Mitchell making it all happen. You have got to love that. Our dear friend Trifecta Surf and Richard Keo Rubin was out looking around in the Southern California surf. I'm going to turn my flashlight off. Uh, there we go. They were down south of here, down around Huntington, and they had plenty of sand crabs. They found that, but man, it was tough fishing. They continued to work at it, however. Richard Keo and Trifecta Surf really work hard at this. And they found a pocket of perch that wanted to bite. Heck, they had really good fishing. Ended up with 15 perch and a corvina, so nothing wrong with that kind of fishing. Don't forget, Big Fish Bait and Tackle is giving away a free, beautiful, custom surf fishing rod this month. And every month this month, it is for the largest halibut. So I hope you go in there, you purchase the ruler that you need to measure your catch with. I think it's 8 bucks. And then you can go from there to winning a free custom surface rod. They'll give you all the details and all the rules down there at Big Fish Bait and Tackle. Don't forget about our used fishing tackle drive for the kids on Cedros Island. We have several drop-off spaces, and you can also send me a text, and we can arrange to get together. You donate your used tackle. And Diego Nuno, who's a deckhand on board the Royal Star, was born on the island of Cedros. We are going to get it all down to the kids 
of Cedros. Tackle Express in Santa Clarita. Hook, line, and sinker in beautiful Santa Barbara. Ventura Sword Fishing. Eric's Tackle in Ventura. Big Fish Bait and Tackle. Island Fishing Tackle. And over in Bellflower, you can go to Young's Fishing Tackle. Drop off your used tackle, and we'll get it to the kids in Cedros Island. Speaking of that, happy Independence Day to Mexico here today. Yesterday, it was Costa Rica. I can't leave my wife out or she'll kill me. So yesterday, Costa Rica. Today, Mexico Lindo. I've had so many great adventures in my life in both those countries. I gave a year of my life down there in Costa Rica when I was 19, teaching impoverished kids English and helping the priests down there. That was the beginning of me learning to speak Spanish and also appreciating Latin culture. Living in Central America was great. And then I spent two years doing much of the same in Mexico. And I have fallen in love with uh, Latin culture and the beauty of Mexico and Costa Rica and so many other countries south of the border. And I just want to wish you a Feliz Dia de Independencia in Mexico y in Costa Rica. Uh, it means so much to me to have traveled there and had so many great adventures. All right, my friends. Did I get it all here? I think I did. I can actually see right now. So that's a good thing. Busy day today. Uh, we'll have two live shows. Danny Cadota here around four o'clock this afternoon from our home base, 22nd Street Landing in beautiful San Pedro, California. San Pedro, California. And then also tonight at Island Fishing Tackle at 6 p.m. You can ask Sam De La Torre any question you like. Well, almost any question. Florida content coming at you in October. So much more going on here at Friedman Adventures. Deeply appreciate all of your support. And I hope to see you really, really soon. Have a great morning, my friends.